Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us the time to worship such an overwhelming, never-ending, all-powerful and marvelous God. You, God, are the one who deserves all glory, all honor, and all power because you created all things. I pray that as we continue on with our service that you guide and direct um, PK's message here um, after we talk about our graduates who um, have done such wonderful work and are moving on with their lives. I ask that you um, guide and direct PK as he speaks. Um, allow him to speak words that are pleasing to you. Let our ears be open to the words that you may take so that we may take and apply what we hear today and trust that you'll guide us out to share you with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You see. All right. All the little kids up here, I see little kids there, there. Why don't you guys all, if you're all moving up in school, if you're all going to summer in a couple weeks, Everybody come stand up here with me. Can we get a
If you have any plans, even if it includes sitting on mom's couch, we'd love to know what you're on. All right, so here you go. Um, my name is Shona Tomino. Um, I'm graduating from um, Atsigo High School, and I plan on going to KBCC for a um, computer science major. Woo!
tag or whatever you call it, right? Now I'm the season. I actually the the tax graduates. I'm talking you know, I'm talking to everybody, right? Because I was like, what would I say to graduates? What what's my big piece of wisdom, right? Because that uh, graduation is all about transition, right? It's it's um, it's one of those places in life where there's transition, and uh, and I, my graduation's gotten so my high school graduation's gotten so far back there. That like, and in first service I pointed out because I like Google, you know, transition to like trying to find the ones that I've been through, and all I can say is this because I haven't figured that out that most of them are behind me, right? And so, and that made me think, what would I say about uh, and Pastor John first service and and in his prayer now he's talking about our future, right? You know, because we all have a future. You guys, it's like fresh because you're graduating and you're moving into the future, but all of us, all of us do here. So I want to John 16, John chapter 16. So grab your Bibles, open up to John 16. Um, if if uh, you don't have a Bible, take hey, Dar, will you look around and help me out here? Um, somebody else, we got Bibles in the back. If you need a Bible, just slip your hand up, John, and may, and somebody will make sure that you get a Bible. Facebook Live, you're on your own, man. So uh, grab a Bible or um, go to your handheld device and uh, over this direction, guys, to your right. Um, just make sure. John chapter 16. Um, so, I, you know, I thought about this because, like, I had to be concise, you know. What is it I'm going to say? And uh, the, the most graduates, if you get a graduation card and it's, like, religious, like somebody goes to the religious section of, of that and gets your graduation card, uh, most of the time, this verse is going to be on there. It's uh, um, it's uh, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. That's like all. It's right on everything. I mean, it's the big verse. You hear about it, and it would have been easy today to kind of like go, "Oh, that's my word of wisdom. I want to share with you." But something else came to mind, and it's for all of us. Okay, it's for all of us, but here's what my word of counsel wisdom would be at this transition life for graduates, for everybody, right? Um, and it's, it's not my words. It would go something like this. In this world, you will have trouble. I, that, that's really inspiring, graduation message, right? In it, but hold on, hang in there. In this world, you will have trouble, but man, take heart. Because Jesus has overcome the world. Right? They're not my words. They're in John 16, 33. Matter of fact, if you're looking at John 16, just run to that verse. John chapter 16, verse 33. And uh, just kind of, because I'm going to be referring to different things here. But, uh, uh, matter of fact, all the way back to uh, John chapter uh, 13. Um, and, and look, I realize that the text is a little unusual. I couldn't find it in the graduation text anywhere. I was like, this is mine, this is my thing, it's what God gives me to share with you um, at this time of your, your graduation. And I wanted to dig deep in the Word, even though it's for 10 or 15 minutes. So here's the thing you have to know about John chapter 16, because I don't like to like just take one verse, right? I like to look at the whole thing, but John chapter 16 is, it's, it's, uh, in the Gospel of John, it's Jesus' final discourse before he's arrested. If you look at John 17, you'll see it's a prayer. It's a real long prayer. He prays for himself. He prays for his disciples, those close to him. And he prays for all believers. He prays for us, right? And then he's arrested. And actually what I want you to know here is John 16, 33, and the reason I'm kind of using this one verse today is because it's his final words besides the prayer. It's his final words of counsel to those closest to him. Because if you go back to John chapter 13, where all of this starts, you'll see the foot washing, you'll see this is where they're, they're all gathered together, and he's teaching them his final teaching before he's arrested. It's the last moments of his life, the last hours of his life. So John 16.33 is actually the final words of instruction before his prayer and arrest. That's why I'm like, this is it. This is the verse, right? I have told you, and actually I, I only quoted you a part of the verse. Um, the whole verse is this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
peace. Now, I gotta tell you, um, and someone out of the first service said it strikes him this way too, but I'll read verses in the Bible when you get the context and you see it. It's actually, there's some humor in it. None from the original listeners. I'm not saying that, right? I'm saying that for me reading it, knowing the context, there's some humor here. Because if you go back to John chapter 13, because in 1633, he starts that statement out by saying, Hey, I told you all this. So you got to go back to 13 and read what he told them, right? Now, there's some cool stuff in there, right? Like, I think it's in John 14 that Jesus says, and this is awesome, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house and many rooms, if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I am, I'm going to come back and take you to be with me where I am. That's powerful stuff. It's good. It's great stuff. He's told them good stuff. But you got to know this. If you look, if you read 13 through 16, you'll find that here's the major part of what he told them. They were going to be persecuted. They, a bunch of people were going to flee. They were going to be persecuted. And most of them, not all, maybe all of them were going to be put to death for their faith and trust in him. <coughs> Matter of fact, one commentary. Let me, let me see here. I, I, yeah. Jesus offered his disciples peace. He made the offer in the most unlikely circumstances. At that very minute, Judas met with Jesus' enemies to plot his arrest. By the way, if you read through those chapters, you'll see that Jesus revealing, revealing it was Judas, although the others didn't get it. Je Judas flees to go ahead and betray him, right? So that's happened in here. One of his best buds has betrayed him. Ever happened to you? I mean, it's all happening to Jesus, like right now, right? At, uh, Jesus knew that he would be arrested, forsaken, rejected, mocked, humiliated, tortured, and executed before the next day was over. All of that is said in those chapters. And then in 1633, he says, all of that I've told you is so that you'll have peace. Something doesn't sound right there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like if I walked to you, up to you and said, hey, I got a whole bunch of bad news. I really want to tell you about your future and it's not looking good. But I'm telling you this so that you'll have peace. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You got to understand with the context what he's saying, though, because it's power stuff. It's the stuff I want you to get in this word of wisdom if you can today. How can there be peace? Because... Um, as a matter of fact, here's the first thing I want you to notice. In this verse, there's a couple of absolutes, right? The first absolute is this. Because Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, tribulation, difficulties, problems, right? So, so, and he doesn't say you might have them. And you know what that got me to thinking? Because I believe this. Listen to me. That Christians, it's the best life. Being a Christian, you, you, there's a whole bunch of life problems that living the Christian life, you avoid. It's a better life. But, but being a Christian doesn't mean you're not going to have any problems. Amen. Or troubles or tribulation, right? Matter of fact, I thought this is probably true. You don't, don't holler out because I thought to myself, somebody's going to, or some are going to. I wondered how many people would say they started out this week and they had plans this week and all the plans went absolutely perfectly and wonderfully and everything worked out just as they thought it would. I know there's somebody that would go, yeah, that's my life. That happens a lot. Not mine. <laughs> Not mine. I'd have a hard time finding any week, most days, where things went exactly the way I thought, the way I planned. We live in a broken world, there's sin involved, we're all affected, and it messes up our days. In this world, guys, you will have trouble. Here's the deal, though, because I don't want to make light of this. The Greek word for trouble in this text is the word flipsis. Listen as I read to you what it means. Properly, this means... Pressure used as a narrow place that hems someone in. Tribulation, especially internal pressure that causes someone to feel confined or without options. 
Okay, so he's including the small stuff we left about a moment ago, the day and day out stuff. But what he's really saying is, hey, what I'm saying to you is you're going to have moments in your life when you feel like there is no answer and no way out. You're confined. Matter of fact, it got me to think of this is later in the notes. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I saw a news report this week that the, the suicide rate of 20 to 30 year olds is, is, is becoming epidemic and it's higher than it's ever been. And the only reason I say that, not at this point you're discouraged, is there's a whole bunch of people, listen to me, who feel confined and like there's no way out. That's what he was saying. That's the tribulation he's talking about. And maybe you came today and you're like, that's where I am. <clears throat> but he says so. Hey, I told you all this stuff so that you could have peace. Because that's the second thing, right? Matter of fact, uh, he's told them all this bad stuff and then he tells them they could have peace. And it got me to thinking to young people. I, I want to tell you a couple things, right? Because <laughs> I got to think, I don't know if it's true, maybe it's just the way I see things as an older person, but the younger generation must be looking at the future and going, stop this mess up. <laughs> and they're scared to death, right? Matter of fact, I understand psychologically there's a lot of paralyzation with the younger generation because they see everything as so messed up. Number one, I think there's crazy stuff going on in the world that I haven't seen happen before. But listen to me, at the same time, I remember when Jason was born, that's 32 years ago. A little over 32 years ago, Jason was born. And I remember announcing that we were having our first kid, and I was disappointed at the number of people that came to me and said, why are you bringing a kid in this world? They'll have no future, the world is so messed up. Right, somebody came up after the uh, first service and was quoting somebody from the 1700s who was saying the same thing. So what I'm saying, I don't know what the future holds, but I know this, man. For generations, people have said how messed up it is. While I think it's more messed up than ever, man, put your future in God's hands. It's going to be all right. Matter of fact, that's what Jesus is saying here. We're going to get to that, right? You will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So what did Jesus mean by peace, right? Because um, how can there be peace? Because he was saying to them, I just told you a bunch of bad stuff the way it's going to be, but you can have peace. Right? But let me just simply say, one of the things he's saying is, he's saying to them, look, here's what's going to happen. When you see it happening, you'll know I told you, and you're going to know I'm in control. Because that's what happened. But we got to look at this word peace, right? Just like they did the word uh, trouble or tribulation. The Greek word for peace meant this, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and content its earthly lot whatsoever. You know what it says? It's not just peace, it's peace of mind. So he uses this word that says when you feel confined and there's no way out, what you're going to get is peace of mind. You know what the world needs, guys? Is peace of mind. No matter what the future holds. Peace of mind. We're lacking it more and more. <laughs> peace of mind. You will have trouble. But you are guaranteed peace. If. I said there are two absolutes. One absolute is you'll have trouble. The second absolute is this peace thing. But if. If it's an absolute with a condition, and what I mean technically this peace was offered but not promised to everyone in this verse. Only those who trust in Jesus, right? There's two places in this text. Look at it with me. Verse 33 says this. He says, so that in me, right? He starts off, I have told you these things so that in me, in <coughs> Jesus, you may have peace. Right? And then he says, take heart, the second part, I have overcome the world. That's pretty restrictive stuff. He's not saying somebody else overcame the world. He said, I have overcome the world. I was sent from God, and I have overcome the world. See, the peace we're talking about, listen to me, can't be found, listen guys, number one, on the internet. 
I'm not opposed to the internet. I got this right here. It's in my pocket. Hey, somebody texted me. <laughs> check that out. No, I'm just, I don't need to check it out now, right? This is, listen to me, guys. And this whole generation is being transformed by this. I, I cut this out for time's sake, but I had this transitional thing. And what all you guys have been through, like you've, I had like you've lived 18 years, but I had that in days and minutes. So how long you've lived. I even, I even had how many uh, years you're going to buy be, that you've eaten already, mostly pizza, but I had all this in numbers, right? <laughs> I had all this in numbers. And one of the numbers that was astounding to me, I put the math together, and here's how I did it. And I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying, listen to, the, listen to how things happen here. Zero to eight-year-olds are on screen time. You know, everybody knows on screen time. They do 50 minutes of screen time a day. Zero to eight-year-olds. Nine to 12-year-olds are doing six hours of screen time a day. That's everything. 13 to 18-year-olds are doing nine hours of screen time a day. And of course, your kids go to school, you know a lot, of, some of that's at school, because a lot of it's happening at school, right? Nine hours of screen time a day. I did the math and found out that at that rate, you'll do 25 years of screen time in a lifetime. And all I want to say, listen to me. The piece you need, you won't find it on the internet. The piece you need, you won't find it in relationships alone. The piece you need, you won't find it in success alone. And you can make your own list. It's just simple. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, because he's overcome the world. So the if is, only those who trust in Jesus Christ. That's the if, and I'm sorry for the restriction there. Because the world likes to say, now, you can get peace anywhere, anyhow, and any. Not, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, you want my peace? Trust in him. It's the only place it's going to happen. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Everybody, here's what I want to do. Maybe you're here today. You've listened to the words of Jesus. It's not me. You listen to the words of Jesus, and you're like, this I know. I don't have that peace. And I want it. I want that peace that Jesus said when I'm in situations where there seems to be no way out. I'll have a peace that only comes from God. You've got to get that by putting your trust in Jesus Christ. If you need to do that today, you want to do that today, you, you, you know that's where you are. Nobody's looking around. You just stand right where you are. Say, today I receive the peace of Jesus by trusting in him. So that from here forward, when I feel like there's no way out, he's going he's to give me that peace. Just stand right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to do anything else. Amen. If he's speaking to you, this is the moment. And I'm not going to belabor it all. Let's everybody stand together. Everybody stand together. Heavenly Father, we praise you today for a peace that comes from nowhere else that says, hey, there's trouble in this world. And Father, I pray these graduates right now, they won't face a bunch of trouble. I pray that their life is filled with blessing. I pray that their life is filled with a lack of trouble. Problems. But even they know, Father, that troubles will come. And I pray that when they get there, They'll remember these words from John 16, 33. You will have trouble, but take heart. Jesus has overcome the world. And their faith will have been placed in you. Thank you for those who had the courage today to stand right now and say, peace of Jesus in my life. Give it to them, because that peace is promised. It would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for the, this precious place of meeting Jesus. Be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want you to remember a couple things. Number one, get your pictures for the director if you haven't done that yet. That little slip of paper of commitment, if God has spoken to you, please put that in the basket out there as you leave this morning. Have a godly. Graduates, we're proud of you. God bless.